This morning, I want to talk to us, and I mentioned this before, the battle is the Lord's. And I know I've preached this before. I know that I've taught it before. I know you've heard this before. But, you know, it really is kind of like what Raymond said. You know, we read these scriptures about resurrection power. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. Bring my slider down a little bit. And so the spirit of Christ lives in us. The resurrection power lives in us. And, and I want you to get this this morning. I know there are several people going through something right now. And I think we all get challenged one day or another. Or, um, you know, the devil doesn't take a vacation. He's always out to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Always. He's always looking for a door in to, to terrorize us or to torment us or to steal from us or try to kill us. And whether it's a doctor's report or whether it's a report of something. And so I want you to open yourself up today for the word of the Lord. You know, it is time that the children of God, say, I'm a child of God. Say it again. I'm a child of God. It is time for the children of God. We have the word of God in us. We have the spirit of God in us. Jesus died on the cross for us. We received him by faith. And no longer are we separated from God the Father because Jesus came in and reconciled us to the Father, our Heavenly Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so um, I want you to open yourself up to the Word this morning because it is time that we experience breakthrough and victory over everything that the enemy brings. Because Jesus says, I have given you authority, I've given you power over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall harm you. Can you say, nothing will harm me? Say it again. Nothing will harm me. we got to get that. The enemy likes to bring fear. You know, Drew, you, that song is perfect for the message today. Raymond, what you brought was perfect. Those sharing this morning before service was perfect. God is perfect. The Bible says our footsteps are ordered of him. He knows the end from the beginning, right? He knows what's up ahead. He knows the enemy's schemes and his plans. He knows what he's going to do against us. But you know what God is doing? He's saying, remember what Paul said? Lord, remove these thorns in, in my side. Remove those. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient. And he's saying, when you're weak, he makes you strong. You know, the devil wants you to say, well, the doctor said this, so I might as well plan my funeral. No, you don't. You don't plan your funeral. You start declaring the word of the Lord. You start saying what uh, Raymond was saying, resurrection power. I got resurrection power in me. I am the living temple of the Holy Spirit. But you might say, well, you don't know what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. What matters is what the word of God says. I can do, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We are not drowning. We're floating. We are surfing on the glory wave. Can you say amen? I'm blessed coming into this building, and I'm blessed when I leave this building. I'm blessed because it's the beginning of the week, and I'm going to be blessed at the end of the week. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to start in 2 Chronicles. You probably kind of know that. But 2 Chronicles 20. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you that it will accomplish the purpose it's set out for. I thank you for giving us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. Praise you, Lord. Right now, we take captive every thought and imagination that the enemy tries to uh, insert through this message in the time of hearing. I think there's not going to be any distortion because the Holy Spirit is causing a flow of his spirit from the word of God into our ears, into our heart to build up our spirit, man. I thank you and I worship you and I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I want to just share something right before. Um, and the reason why the Lord spoke to me about this message, because something happened about last Saturday. 
And um, that person I was sharing about at work who just came in and was so nasty to me. Well, one day, another day he came and he was very nasty to me. He just surged me. He works on the property of the, the towers. And he came in and he demanded for me to do a certain thing. And I'm looking at him going, are you for real? And, and, and my coworker was with me. And I just looked at him, and number one, I was about to jump over that counter, and I was about to tell him, do you, do you understand who you're talking to? Do you know who I am? I am, I'm about to tell him, I am a child of the Most High God, and I don't have to put up with what you're trying. He was trying to get me to bow down. He was going to be the authoritarian and wanted me to bow down. And he's speaking all this stuff in front of my coworker, and he says, if I wasn't in this uniform I would do this. And I went, ooh, I was so mad. And you know what the Lord spoke to me? He says, this is not your battle. This is my battle. And when I'm sharing this in the natural, and we're going to get into the natural, but there's spiritual things. Bring my slider down a little bit more. And, and so what I'm telling you, whatever you're going through, whether it's a natural thing, whether it's a spiritual thing, whether it's a health thing, you know what? The battle is the Lord's. So throughout that day, I'm thinking, <laughs> and I'm thinking, and but the Lord says, I want you to pray in the Spirit. And I began to pray in the Spirit. He says that there's a demon. He's got a demon. Because I don't even know this person. All I've done is I sold him stuff, and, and he's the one who's kind of been so abruptly. He would interrupt me as I'm with the customers, and, and, and the Lord says, I want you to pray in the Spirit. There's a demon. You're dealing with a demon. So I would see him coming, and I would just start praying in tongues. And I'll tell you what, you know what he did? And this yesterday he was around, and I was praying in the Spirit. And you know what he did? He would turn and walk away from me. Because you know what? We got to fight this fight with the Lord and the Lord's way. You know what, y'all? I'm going to say something right now. I believe what's going on in our country. I believe we all are in the same. I think we all want the same thing. Are you with me this morning? You know, it's just the way we project things, the way we say things, and way, you know what, we want healing, we want safety, we want all those things. Are you with me this morning? But it's the way we say things. And you know, the other thing the Lord was showing me is, is you know, people, our society does not know how to communicate. We don't know how to talk to each other. We really don't know how to talk to. There's several times I, I can get offended by people being the way they project themselves when I go to help them and they project themselves and I'm thinking, I'm here to help you. And the Lord is showing me people don't know how to communicate. That's what the problem we have right now is we don't know how to communicate. And what was the ultimate thing we talked about this morning is loving one another. Jesus, and nothing else matters to the Lord if we don't love one another, nothing else matters. He says those are the two greatest commands, to love your neighbor as yourself. Number one, it's love God with everything, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Love covers. So this morning, as I'm sharing, and, uh, and as we get into the Word, whatever you're going through, I can just sense it in the spirit realm. I've sensed this since last week. That's why I sensed it even last Sunday. And I felt like, is this the time to bring it forth? And, and it wasn't because the Lord, you know what? I was putting the Lord's word. I was standing on his word. I was testing him on his word. You said you would protect me. You would take care of my enemies. And so the Lord said, I'm going to show you the evidence and when you do it my way, you will see the evidence. And you know what? This, this is an assignment of the devil. He's an assignment of the devil. Because yesterday I get called into the manager's office and they say, we love what you're doing. We're promoting you. And he talked about all these nice things and stuff. So why wouldn't the devil come in and try to discourage me, try to bring fear? You spoke peace in your song. The enemy uses fear to try to keep us from moving ahead and, and wants us to retreat and say, well, it's really bad. You know what? God has brought us through so much, and he will continue to bring us through more. Can you say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say hallelujah? You know, I had this one, there's this one guy, young kid, really. Everyone's a kid to me nowadays. <laughs> 
And he, he says, so you're going to church on Sunday? Well, what's really neat is because last week he was buying something. He said, oh, I can't spend my tithe. My tithe is in my wallet. I have it stored here. And I said, God bless you. Good idea. So anyway, yesterday he says, are you going to church tomorrow? I said, well, I guess so. I'm the pastor of the church. <laughs> and he says, what church do you go to? And I told him, he said, I'm bringing my girlfriend and we're going to come to your church. I said, well, okay, praise the Lord. So you know what, y'all? You have to understand the devil is going to try all kinds of things, but God is bigger than the devil. You have and I have been given authority and power over all the enemies. Can you say amen? All right, let's get into the word of the Lord this morning. And I want you to open yourself up for the Lord to speak to you about your situation. It's not all about my situation. Like I told you last week, the devil likes to get, um, he likes to tell me, Rhonda, why, he says, why are you talking about yourself all the time? You know, stop talking about yourself. And you know what I said to him? I said, I'm going to put God's word to the, to the test. I practice his word. It, how am I going to project something if it doesn't work in my life, right? So you know what? The word of God is working in my life. There's evidence of it. I'm sharing it with you to build your faith, to encourage you. Don't give up. Would you just lift up your hands and say, I'm not giving up. Say, I'm not giving up. Say, I'm winning. I'm victorious. I'm more than a conqueror. Say, I'm going to finish this race that the Lord has put me in. Amen. So 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. We know this one, but it says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Menuhites, came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from the other side of the sea, and it's already close. Verse 3, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved. What did he do? He, he was alarmed, but he, he resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. So what did Jehoshaphat do? He didn't say, oh, it's going to be bad, Diane. Oh, we're going to lose. You know what he did? He went to the Lord and he inquired of the Lord. He wasn't going to let fear get in the way. He wanted to seek the Lord. Here's a word for somebody. Just seek the Lord. Still believe the Lord. Come on, Lord, I trust you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So he sought the Lord. And this is what happened. So he resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And what does Judah mean? Praise. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. So what is he doing? He's declaring that nothing and no one can withstand you, God. Are you with me this morning? Nothing can overtake God. I want you to hear that again. Nothing can overtake God. Well, the devil's whispering in my ear. What does he do this? What if he do this? And the Lord just reminded me to say, this is the Lord's battle. When you want to start fighting your own battle, you need to declare this battle is the Lord's. All week, you know, I was thinking about it and I was getting madder and madder. I'm thinking, you know, like I said, who do you think you're talking to? I am a child of the Most High God. And the Lord said, keep your mouth shut because I'm going to show you. The Lord said that to me. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I mean, I'm speaking this out because somebody needs to hear this. The Lord says, I'm going to show you. I'm going to move on your behalf. I'm going to show you that I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight and instead of you. I'm going to fight. I'm going to cause whatever's in your way to be removed. And I say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And you know what it does? It takes my focus off of my situation, and I keep my focus on the Lord. Can you say amen? Because, you know, when we get up tight, when we get up tight, it wears us out, doesn't it? 
Have you ever fretted over something? You worried over something? And, and by the end of it, you're so worn out by worrying about it. So the Lord wants us to say, the battle is the Lord. Say that with me. The battle is the Lord. Say it again. The battle is the Lord. All right, let's go on. Hallelujah. So he says, our Lord God, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Here's Abraham again, y'all. Here he goes. And he, what is Joshua saying? You've already taken care of the enemy. Now this enemy is trying to raise up again. Oh, Lord, haven't you already taken care of the enemy? I, I want to say that over here. Hasn't the Lord already taken care of your enemy? And now he's trying to raise himself up in, in, in a different form, a different fashion, in a different way. He's trying to discourage you. He's trying to cause you to just give up. But you know what? We're not, we don't give up because we're more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We haven't come this far for nothing. Why give up now? We're too far into this. We're so far off of the shore of where we used to be. You can't turn back. There is no place to go anymore. God is taking care of that stuff. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Go to verse 13. All of the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, and I'm going to, as he stood in the assembly in verse 15, he said, Listen, I got a word for us today. Listen up. Listen up, Rhonda. Listen up, Liza. Listen up, Teresa. Listen up, Pastor Jan. Listen up, Clayton. Listen up, Raymond. Listen up, Josie. Listen up, Doris. Listen up, Frida. This is the word for us today. Listen up. The Lord is going to speak to you right now, a personal word. Those who are watching right now, listen up. Don't get distracted now. Now's not the time to get distracted. Here's a word of the Lord that he's given us a word right now. He's giving you a word right now, a personal word right now. Are you ready for the word this morning? Are you ready for a personal word of the Lord? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you personally as I speak out his word. Here's what the Lord says. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. In verse 15, he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. That's the first step. Do not be afraid. The enemy wants to bring fear because of a bad report. There was a vast army that came against Jehoshaphat. There was three armies coming against him and his kingdom. They were coming to destroy Jehoshaphat's kingdom and take captive the people or kill the people and steal his goods. But you know what? Our God is bigger than a vast army. Our God is bigger than a doctor's report. Our God is bigger than debt and lack and all those things and depression and oppression and mental illness and, 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 and disorders and all that stuff. Our God is so big. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Somebody needs to hear this. Do not be afraid and, or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. All through the week, as I was trying, the enemy wanted me to think about that situation. And I just said, um, the battle is the Lord. I'm going to worship you. And again, whenever I saw this person, I was praying in tongues. <laughs> And I had my mask on, so, you know, I could be checking somebody out or bagging groceries or helping somebody cut some service, and I could pray in tongues, and they didn't even know I was praying in tongues. But the Lord did. Hallelujah. The Lord did. The Lord heard my prayers, and the Lord is working behind the scenes. So every time I see this person, see, that spirit wants me to bow down. And I didn't bow down. And it was mad because I wouldn't bow down. 
He wanted me to bow down to that spirit. But you know what? you got to let the Holy Ghost rise up in you. I want you to understand. You know, you need to tell the devil, who do you think you're talking to? We are the children of the Most High God. We are victorious. You already lost at the cross. He already lost at the cross. He has already lost at the cross. And some people, and the devil's right now saying, oh, don't you hear that? Don't you say that because I'm going to attack you. You know what? If you bow down to the devil, if you allow him to cause you to be afraid, he will continue to cause you to be afraid. He will cause, he will push all kinds of buttons. And we just need to apply the blood of Jesus over ourselves, over your homes, over your family, over one another and say, I am a child of the most high God. The bad is the Lord. I'm not going to have to fight this battle. The Lord is fighting my battles. Can you say amen? The best thing we can do is just praise and worship the Lord. What did Jehoshaphat do? He began to de declare the goodness of the Lord. He began to declare how big his God is. That's what we need to do when we get a bad report. Well, my God's big. My God has brought me this far. My God has delivered me out of the hands of my enemy. My God has healed my body. My God has provided for my rent or provided for me to pay my bills. Whatever it is, we need to declare how big our God is. Can you say amen? And when the devil shouts louder and says, oh, you better be afraid. Jesus, I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. You know what? Just say Jesus when the devil starts on it. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, and pray in the Spirit. Use your prayer language. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. You will be climbing up to the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jerusalem. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position. Here's the word of the Lord. Take up your position. Oh, this person, the demon, realized, I'm taking up my position. I'm not bowing down. And this is a big old guy, too. This is a big old guy. I remember years ago, we had a new roof put on the whole property. And this contract company... Um, did it and they really did it. they helped us out a lot we the ceiling in the sanctuary was all replaced i mean we had a hundred and three thousand dollars worth uh um repairs done because of hail it came through and so this contractor said well we're going to go ahead and donate ten thousand dollars to whatever back to your church out of this money and i said oh that's great well there came a time they didn't finish their work and they wanted their their final payment Besides the 10000 they didn't want the 10000 but they wanted their final payment. I said, you're going to finish the work first before you get your final payment. And he was just this big old guy comes in on a motorcycle, you know, big old husky guy comes in at the building. And, and one, of, one of the leaders was in the hallway with me. And this guy stormed me and says, you're going to pay me right now. And I got in his face and said, you're going to back off and we're going to pay you when you get the job done. You come in this church acting like you're doing and I'm not going to tolerate it. Now, he could have pound me in the ground. But you know what? He backed off. Because you know what? I was standing my ground. Oh, I, was gonna, I was standing my ground. He was going to fulfill what he promised. And this is God's church. This is God's ministry. He's coming against God's place, God's people. Are you with me this morning? we got to get in our heads. We don't have to roll over and play dead to these things that come against us. We take up our position and stand firm, and we will see the deliverance of the Lord. Are you with me this morning? Now, I could have provoked that spirit, but the Lord told me not to. He says, I will fight the battle. You just watch and see. I'm going to fight this battle for you. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You will not have to fight this battle in verse seven, 17. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah or Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I'm speaking this to you this morning. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. What does he say? You're going to have to, sometimes you're going to have to face things. 
you're going to sometimes it's not always easy facing things, y'all. You can run from a situation or you can face it. There's certain things you're going to have to face. If somebody's done you wrong, you need to pray about it and say, Lord, how do you want me to deal with it? He may say, I want you to confront it. He may say, no, you're not going to run and let them have their own way. You're going to confront it, and I'm going to open a door for you to confront it. Or he may say, just pray in the Spirit, and I'll take care of it. But see, we got to follow the footsteps the Lord has ordered. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. Let's go on. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face him tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Ooh, praise God. He knew where his power came from. He knew what he should do, the power of worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then some of the Levites, and I'm going to go down to verse 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and and people of Jerusalem. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. I'm speaking that over you today. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. In the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. In consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, as they began to sing and praise, as they began to sing and praise, you don't need an instrument, you don't need a jam box, you don't need music, just begin to sing and praise of how good he is. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. I praise you, Jesus. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. I worship you, Lord. I magnify you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord, for all praise and glory goes to you. Lord, I worship you. Praise you, Lord. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, praise, the Lord set up ambushes against the men of men of Ammon and Moab and Monsir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. What happened? They were defeated. Your enemy has been defeated. He has been defeated. I'm going to say it again. I don't know if that's good news to you or not. I'm here to tell you, your enemy has been defeated. Is that good news or what? Your enemy has been defeated. Can you give him a praise offering or something or say hallelujah or pray to you or thank you, Jesus. Yes, your enemy has been defeated. He's been defeated. Not that he's going to be defeated. My enemy has been defeated. This demon that is acting in this person has been defeated. Can you say amen? Your situation, the enemy coming through your situation has been defeated. Stand your ground. Take your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. Can you say amen? All right. Go to 1 Samuel 17. We're going to stay in the Old Testament for now, just for a few minutes. I'm reminding us. The Lord is reminding us of what he's done through other people. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Thank you, Lord. Verse 41. David and Goliath. In verse 41, it says, Meanwhile, the Philistine, the giant, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. 
Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. I kind of felt like that. The big old guy talking to me like he was doing. <laughs> a little... I'm telling you, I've learned something through the years. I've learned stuff through the years. I've learned something through the years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 45, it says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have challenged. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. He's being bold, isn't he? Because you know what? He knew how big his God is. He knew, he saw God working on his behalf before. He had a relationship with God, and he knew that God would always come through to whatever he had need of God to do. Can you say amen? That's how we need to be. God will never fail us. He will always come through. Let's go on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike down and cut off your head in verse 46. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And all those gathered here will know that it is not by the sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle, here it is again, for the battle is the Lord's. Here David understood, for the battle is the Lord. David had a stick, and a, he had the slingshot, and a few stones. And this, this giant had been, he had been trained from youth to do and to be good. He was buffed, he was big, he had an armor bearer before him. He had somebody, a shield bearer uh, before him to keep any kind of, uh, of weapons or uh, anything that would hit him or attack him. But you know what? When the Lord fights for you, the Lord has a way to go past you at that shield bearer. He, all that Goliath had was this little old area right here in the mask he put on in his helmet. And you know what? God took that stone. As David flung that stone, God took hold of that stone and took that stone right in that little old area and knocked him out. It went past the shield bearer. It went past the one who was trained. And if he did not protect Goliath, that man was good as dead. But you know what? God took that stone. The God could have took the, I just seen God take that stone over the shield bearer and around him and right in to where it needed to happen. See, our God is big. Our God is strategic. Our God can do things that no man can do for nothing is impossible with our God. Can you say amen? Whatever your situation is, whatever your circumstances, today is the day to say, for the battle is the Lord. He will fight this battle. He will show me what to do and what not to do. He will say, stand your ground. Do you do not get pushed around. Stand your ground and pray in the spirit or whatever it is. But the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Well, my family, we have this generational thing that passes down. We'll break the curse right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that curse has been broken right now and that it will not continue in you, through you, to the next generation. We are the children of the Most High God. Jesus paid the price. Jesus took the stripes upon his back to break every generational curse that may try to affect your life or your children's life. Can you say amen? So, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. The Israelites, their army was afraid of Goliath. They were bowing, they were afraid, and they were running back whenever he, he would get up there and declare things. But David says, God's going give to give us your army. In verse 48, as the Philistine moved close to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. 
So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. For the battle is the Lord's. In verse, in John, you just write this down. John 14, 27 says, peace, Jesus says, I leave with you my perfect peace. Wasn't that the song you were singing, Drew? My perfect peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage. Listen to what I'm saying. Let me say this again. Let my perfect peace calm you. Jesus is saying this. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Praise the Lord. Go to Ephesians 6 real quick. Hallelujah. Are you receiving this morning? Is the Lord talking to you, speaking to you, encouraging you this morning? Ephesians 6.10, we know this. Finally, be strong in the Lord. What does it say? Be strong in the Lord. Not strong in Raymond. Not strong in Frida. Not strong in Liza, not strong in Rhonda, not strong in Pastor Jan, not strong in Ricky, not strong in Pastor Kenny. It says, be strong in the Lord. But Lord, I just want to say something. <laughs> Lord, I want this person to know. I, you do not know who you're talking to. But you know what? The battle isn't mine. The battle is the Lord. Let's go on. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, what do you do then? Stand. After I've done everything, stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. We are the righteousness of God. Who are you talking to? Who do you think you are? Right? And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. What was I doing? I was praying in the Spirit because that demon, he was, he, he's waiting. I'm telling you, he's waiting for another opportune time. But I'm going to pray in the Spirit. Every time I see that person in the store, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. I'm going to pray in tongues. And you know what? The God is going to fight. He's fighting my battle for me. He will show me so I can tell you what he has done. Can you say amen? So pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Don't, you know, the thing of it is, what some of our problems are, is we wait until we get a bad report to start praying. We wait until the situation gets so bad that I need a whole bunch of people to pray with me. You know what? Start praying now before anything happens. Plead the blood of Jesus over you and your family every morning. Start declaring that no weapon formed against me and my family shall prosper. Don't wait until the attack happens. Be proactive before the attack happens. It says here, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions and all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray for one another. And you know what, y'all? We got to pray for one another. Everything that we said this morning, we, and going back to Abram, what I spoke about in the, in the offering, God says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Be careful who you curse, especially other believers, because you're opening yourself up for an attack. The best thing to do is pray. Can you say amen? 
Just pray. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be an expert in how to fix all these problems. We can't fix these problems, but God can fix these problems. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Go to John 16 real quick. We're almost done. John 16, 23. The word is speaking. The word of the Lord is speaking to us today. Hallelujah. I want you to go home today rejoicing in the Lord, that the Lord is fighting your battle for you. John 16, 23. Jesus is about to leave the planet. In that day, you will no longer ask me, for, ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. That's good news. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. What does he say? Ask and you shall receive. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me peace. Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need encouragement. Lord, I need more of you. Lord, I need strength. Ask in his name. Though I have been speaking figuratively, I got that out, praise the Lord. That's the anointing. A time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but you will, te will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. Listen to what he's saying. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. And then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without a figure of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you, hallelujah, do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Verse 33. I have told you these things, Jesus said, so in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I think we talked about that on Wednesday. In closing, go to Mark 16. I want you to leave today with power and authority. I want you to know who you are in Christ Jesus. I want you to have an understanding. You, don't know, you do not have to live in defeat, but we are more than conquerors. Things are supposed to happen for the children of the Most High God. Good things. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 16. Praise Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Jesus, go into the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get better. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. So he's telling the disciples, this is what you will do. And when he told the disciples, this is what you're going to do, he's telling us the same thing. This is what you will do because Jesus died on the cross. Not just Pastor Tony, not just because of a pastor or a minister. This is for you and me that we have been told, this is what you will do. I want you to lift up your hand and say, this is what I'm going to do. Because Jesus told me I will do this. Hear what I'm saying? There's going to come a time. You're not going to have time to call somebody to pray with you. You're going to have to take authority and power over a circumstance or situation. We don't have time anymore. We've got to be about the Lord's business. We've got to walk in authority and power. We, or you know what? The enemy's going to do us in. But here, when Jesus told them, 
the rest of the story. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. You know what he did? They went out and did what Jesus told them to do, and the Lord confirmed his word. He confirmed his word. He made his word come forth. It happened just as he said it would. The Lord is speaking to us today. Go and do what I tell you to do. I'm fighting your battle. I will make a way where there seems to be no way. I've got your back. I go before you. I am your rear guard. I am the shield about you. I am your protector. I am your warrior. I am fighting for you. I am for you, not against you. Your winning and not losing. Today is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We serve a mighty God and we are mighty children of God. We are not down in the dump, but we are seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. We win always. Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? We sung a song at the beginning of the service today. I'm going to the enemy's camp and I'm taking back what he has stolen. Let's take back what the devil has stolen. And if he's taken a loved one, you know what you do? Well, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus and I'm going to bring them up as a remembrance unto the Lord. Lord, you had a plan for their life. And for whatever reason they left this planet and they didn't fulfill your purpose, I'm going to go ahead and take up the torch and I'm going to carry the torch on their behalf. And we're going to finish their purpose together. We're not going to let the purpose of the Lord fade away or die away. We're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to take our children out of the enemy's camp and we're going to take them and we're going to take them to the Lord. We're going to pray over our children and our grandchildren and say, Satan, you can't have our children. They are a blessing to us. You bless us with our children. We're taking them out of the enemy's hand. They're going to, Lord, give them a desire for your word. Give them a desire to serve you. Pray over them that the Lord will give them a desire for him. Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say I'm winning? I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. Hallelujah. Whew. I guess that's it. <laughs> that's a lot to say, right? Whew. I want us to be encouraged. Teresa, be encouraged. I've been thinking about you. The Lord is fighting your battle for you. The Lord is taking care. I don't know anything, but I just sense the Lord is fighting your battle. 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 Don't let anyone or anything get in the way. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we're going to speak to the people in the camera or anybody in this building. If you do not know Jesus... As your Lord and Savior, now is the time to ask him to come into your life. Because you know what? I have seen miracles. I have seen signs and wonders. I've seen great things that the Lord has done in others' lives as well as mine and your life. And today, you just sense the Lord hugging at your heart. Today is the day to ask Jesus to come into your life. Would you pray with me this morning? Would the congregation pray with me? Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is your son who died for me. Today, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, my life forever. Amen. You're saved. If you've stepped off the path and you want to get back on the path, it's easy. Pray with me. Jesus, forgive me for stepping off your path. Today, I'm getting back on your path to serve you and to have a relationship with you. Amen. Lift up your hands this morning. If there's anything that you have need of, the Lord will take care of it. The Lord is already taking care of it. He took care of it with those stripes on his back. And right now, whatever your need, whether sickness or disease 
or fear, whatever it is, you know what it is. I declare the name of Jesus over you right now. I declare by the stripes of Jesus, be made whole. I declare right now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I declare joy over you. I declare peace over you. I declare the fullness of Christ over you. Today is a day of turnaround. Today is a day of breakthrough. I declare right now by the name of Jesus, oh, by the power of the name of Jesus, Things are changing for the good in your life and in your family's life, in your children's life, in your children's children's life, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your community. Everything's changing because Jesus has showed up in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say the battle is the Lord's, not mine, but the Lord's. Hallelujah. Give me a big clap, Aubrey. We say goodbye to you watching today. Join us next week. The Lord is speaking to us. He's preparing us for great things ahead of us. Amen. God bless you.